Hey guys, it's Marco, the Pro Consumer, and I'm back with another video. This one was kind of a spur of a moment type of thing. I wasn't planning on making it, but here I am. So the topic of this video is finding the most efficient workstation for grading, editing, and basically doing 4K work and post-production. So we're talking about editing video, color correcting, grading, exporting, and rendering all in a machine, and uh, time is money, basically. So the more time you lose to all those processes, and if you have harder, it's old or slow, or doesn't have the, uh, the best tools at hand, then ultimately you are gonna be losing money, whether that's time or money in general, you're gonna be losing it. So that's a very important tool to have, and looking for the best bang for buck type of system in terms of really maximizing your Turn on investment. So two systems that are basically in my life was one that I actually own here, which is a 2017 iMac. It's a 5K model. Obviously, it's 27 inches, but it's also the top of the line iMac that you can buy from Apple other than the iMac Pro. It has that i7 processor. It has the AMD RX 580 with 8 gigabytes of DDR5 VRAM in there. So it's basically the top of the line spec iMac and the non-pro flavor. That is an awesome machine. It has some serious performance, especially when we're talking about Final Cut Pro and even DaVinci Resolve 14, which is my preferred uh, non-linear editor that I use on a daily basis, especially for color correcting. So I was looking for something that could compete with my iMac and probably cost a heck of a lot less because that iMac right there is $3,000 minus any upgrades that I've done post, which means RAM and all that kind of stuff I've done on my own and that's also come out of my pocket. So I was on a hunt and I was looking for custom PCs, but I wanted to make a video that you guys can relate to and ultimately a machine that you guys can have access to without building if you have no PC building experience, which I'm sure many of you do, but again, I'm a novice of that kind of stuff, so I wanted to get something that was easy to be accessible to anyone watching this video, and that is where I came up with the Dell Inspiron 5675. Now, the 5675 is a gaming tower. It's definitely not the most pretty computer. It's actually kind of an eyesore, but first of all, let me just talk to you about the headline features of this 5675, my specific model, that, by the way, only cost $1,300. So packed inside the 5675 is an eight-core CPU. It's an AMD Ryzen 7. It's an 1800. X clocked in at 3.6 gigahertz. It also has an AMD RX 580 with 8 gigabytes of RAM. It has a solid state drive hooked up to a normal hard drive for extra storage. It boots up from that SSD, so it's really, really fast. And it has some great big fans to keep it all cool and very nicely running. And again, for $1,300, we're talking about some insane performance inside of this PC that you can buy off the shelf. So how do the iMac and the 5675 stack up? Well, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so quick little note here. My continuity in this video is absolutely terrible. I started recording this video really late at one night. Then the next day, I had a different shirt on. And then at the end of this video, I got a haircut because I forgot I had an appointment. So really, really messed up on my part. Sorry, guys. We'll try to keep continuity as a uh, norm for the next future videos. But anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. So you might be asking how are we going to be comparing these two machines on an even playing field? Obviously on the Mac side you have things like Final Cut Pro which only run a Mac but is also absolutely optimized for every single piece of hardware in an iMac or any Mac for that matter. It uses 100% of the CPU and the GPU to do its computations. And then you look at the other side on Mac in Premiere Pro, it isn't optimized. It runs like crap, and it barely uses any CPU or GPU, and it very has uh, very little support for multi-GPU support as well. On the Windows side, well, you can't run Final Cut Pro because it's not available. Premiere Pro obviously is an uneven uh, matchup between these two computers, so the only one I think that is fair enough for both machines is DaVinci Resolve 14 Studio, or DaVinci Resolve 14, whichever you have, doesn't really matter, because both of these computers will be optimized to its software, so it will be using all CPU performance you have, every core and thread you have at your disposal, and the GPUs built in. And because these two have essentially the same GPU, we should be seeing pretty similar performance on the GPU side, and we're really going to be seeing the huge differences, or in my opinion, the huge differences in terms of export time when we go back to a CPU-intensive task, because the iMac, again, only has four cores, eight threads. This thing has eight cores, six 
16 threads. So the test I've come up with is taking a two and a half minute 4K video shot on the Panasonic GH5 in 422 10-bit at 400 megabits per second in the .mov format. Importing that into DaVinci Resolve Studio, we'll be doing a light color correction, bringing it up to a Rec 709 standard from Log, slight video grade, slight color grade to that clip. And then all we're gonna be doing basically is exporting that back out into an H.264 codec at 80 megabits per second because it's a fairly good type of bitrate to upload to YouTube because that's exactly what I do. Um, it will really be taxing these two computers in terms of taking that .mov file, turning it into a more compressed file because it's a very computationally intense task. So we'll definitely have to see what the performance is between these two machines. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so we're on the Dell 5675. And the reason why I'm doing this on my camera instead of doing it as a screen record is I didn't want to take any CPU power or GPU power away from either of these machines. So bear with me with the quality. I try to get it as best as possible. Uh, and also make it as comfortable as possible for me to still work here. So here I have DaVinci Resolve 14, and I have this awesome two and a half minute clip of my dog, Bella. Um, it's just basically a continuous two and a half minute clip of her being goofy and me talking to her. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the audio there, just take it out. And uh, yeah, it's just a quick little video. So first of all, I wanted to show you timeline performance. So I do have a color correction node on here. It's this node, if I take it off, you guys can see that it's quite a flat image. Uh, turn it back on and we have color back on here. So into the timeline, I just wanna show you guys how timelines work and how if it drops any frames, which I really, it really shouldn't here because we have quite a powerful machine. So this video was shot at 24 or 23.976 frames per second. And I have a little identifier right here saying that, hey, I am currently playing back in 23.976 frames per second, which means it is not dropping any frames. And as you can see, it's really, really smooth. And I can, I can move this little cursor here all across the uh, timeline and have no issue whatsoever, um, even with a grade being applied to this video clip. Um, over here is just my coloring tool my coloring panel and overall again, just very minor grades, right? I just did a couple things to boost the contrast, saturation, all that kind of stuff. Again, I'm not making a movie out of here. I am adding some color, getting this back to a Rec. 709 standard. And if you uh, pull up the, uh, if you pull up the scopes there, you guys can see that I do have a fairly uh, large image in terms of color. It is a little warmer, but uh, that's because Bella is a yellow uh, golden retriever lab mix there. So you probably will have to have a little bit of yellow and red in there. Uh, but I do have quite a lot of uh, information here. And the reason why it's a little bunched up right there is because I did have some highlights. I didn't want to blow up or blow out towards the beginning of this video of the window. So I made sure to keep those in check. So overall, let's go ahead and switch over to our Deliver tab. But we won't really have to go into Fairlight because we're not doing a whole lot of audio work. So the uh, very important thing with this is we're rendering out to a H.264. So it's in QuickTime format, right? Uh, and because this is a PC, we don't have a Pro, a ProRes, which I don't know if, why would you want to export in ProRes because that your file would be absolutely massive. So we're going to go ahead and choose H.264. 23.976 frames per second, 3840 by 2160. It's gonna be matching the uh, project resolution. And then in terms of quality, you can leave it as automatic, but it really depends on where your GPU and CPU is. Really, it's only your CPU at this point. So we're gonna go ahead and restrict it to 80,000 kilobits per second or 80 megabits per second. That will give us an 80 megabits per second constant export, which means our quality will be at always at 80 megabits per second, which is definitely way above YouTube standard for, uh, for quality. So we'll go ahead and add that to our rendering key. Let me just go ahead and uh, title this thing real quick. Let's do Bella Movie and our location. Let's go ahead and save that on my desktop. So save that to the desktop, Bella Movie. Go ahead and add to render queue and start render. So I don't have to time it because DaVinci Resolve has a built-in timer. So I'll let this continue and export and we'll check back and see how it goes. All right, so we're coming up to the end of this render. We're exporting out and uh, it hasn't taken too long. It's a little less than real time. So I'm expecting a total time of three minutes and 54 seconds for about a two and a half minute, two minutes, 30 second clip took three minutes and 54 seconds. So uh, not bad at all. It was probably averaging about 16 frames a second of export, which is uh, not a bad time at all. So we can go ahead 
and double click, open this guy up, and here is our clip. So we just exported this, and uh, yeah, looks pretty good, right? So we'll go ahead and jump onto the iMac. We'll mirror this grade, mirror everything, and do the exact same test on the iMac. All right, so basically I mirrored my grade onto this clip as well. It's the same clip, and we'll show you the scopes. Pretty balanced out throughout the entire clip. You can scrub through, you can see a lot of data in there. So it's the same clip, same timeline, two and a half minutes. Uh, and to show you some timeline performance, let's go ahead and just pick a point arbitrarily, hit play again. Clip was in 23.976 frames, project's in 23.967 frames per second, and it's playing that no problem again. Basically the same GPU in both machines, uh, so we should expect the same type of timeline performance in terms of playing it back. And both of those machines were playing it in full resolution, even though it's probably a scale that's about 56% because I have a 5K display. But in full resolution, there is no proxy file, no optimized media. It is literally just the raw clip. And that's really impressive, especially on the iMac, because this exact clip doesn't even play in Final Cut Pro, which is supposed to be very optimized for Mac. So let's go ahead and go back to our color page. We already showed you the scopes. We'll go ahead and skip the Fairlight audio again, and then we're going to be doing the exact same export here. 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD resolution, 23.976 frames per second in QuickTime format, but we're gonna go ahead and change from ProRes to H.264. We're gonna restrict it to 80 kilobits per second, which is about roughly 80 megabytes a second, or 80, 80 megabits a second, I should say. Um, and then, yep, so QuickTime H.264, 3840 by 2160, 24-ish frames a second, 80 megabits per second in terms of the uh, bit rates. Uh, same, everything else, we're gonna go ahead and turn a file. We'll call it the Bella movie as well. Okay, go ahead, add to render queue. So here it is in my render queue, start render. And because it has a built-in timer, we're gonna go ahead and play it. So off the bat, I'm already seeing actually a huge, huge difference. So uh, currently exporting in 41, 42 frames a second, which is very, very fast in real time. So obviously there's gonna be a lot more acceleration. There's a built-in hardware acceleration for this uh, 7700K for um, HEVC, which supports H.264 and H.265. So our render speed here actually looks faster than real time. It's crazy. All right, so we exported this video. It was a two minute and 30 second 4K clip and it exported in one minute and 28 seconds. That is whoppingly fast compared to the Ryzen 7 processor in the Dell 5675, which exported the same clip with essentially the same grades in three minutes and 54 seconds. All right, so it's conclusion time between the iMac and the Dell Inspiron 5675. So I was kind of going in, not really sure what to expect because I thought I had a really good spec iMac, uh, but then I ran the tests and I ran a few different types of tests uh, off camera and I think I have a pretty good picture painted in my head. So let's just talk about that little two and a half minute 4K clip that I did between the iMac and the 5675. Well, the iMac outperformed the 5675 by, get this, 265.91%. And that's a real 265% increase, not some crazy weird 100% added to that. It was just a whole lot faster. As you saw in the 5675, it was only able to export about 14 to 18 frames per second, while the iMac was nearly double real time in terms of exporting. It was doing about 41, 42 FPS in terms of export, the same bit rate, same resolution to basically the same directory as a desktop folder. So I try to keep it as even as possible, did the same exact grade. There was nothing super crazy in that it was just CPU performance performance power of exporting clips. Now, I did some other types of tests earlier and later between this video, and I found where the AMD Ryzen 7 really shines, and it's absolute raw compute power. When we're talking about performance, we're talking about uh, exporting a video or playing through a timeline of a bunch of LUTs, a bunch of filters, LUTs, a bunch of effects that really tax your CPU and GPU. The Ryzen can really deal with a whole lot of uh, noise reduction a lot better than my iMac. Now I did a test of about 45 seconds of 4K video exporting to the same uh, codec, so H.264 and 80 megabits per second on both the iMac and 5675, but I added a spatial noise reduction 
reduction to both clips and the Ryzen 7 outperformed the iMac by about 10 to 15% every single time. But when we're talking about just doing color correcting and light grading, we're talking about the iMac is two and a half times faster in export than the 5675. Now, it's also about twice the money. So you kind of do get what you pay for on paper. The Dell 5675 is a more powerful machine. And then Cinebench definitely outperforms it. It gets about a 1600 Cinebench score while the iMac is just under 1000. Uh, so you definitely do get some raw compute power with the 5675. And if you're doing stuff with noise reduction and stabilization and all that stuff, then you're probably better off going to the Ryzen chip. And now if you're looking for basically a machine to edit and put together 4K clips, do some color correcting, do some color grading, then the iMac may be the machine for you, but again, it's quite the expensive machine. And for the money of the iMac 5K with the 4.2 gigahertz i7, you can probably do a custom built PC with an Intel i7, the 8700, which is a six core, 12 thread processor, or you could probably even build a Threadripper 16 core, 32 threads AMD rig, which I'm actually looking to build sometime in 2018. And we'll definitely have to maybe even price match the iMac. So say $2,600 for an iMac, we can do a you know $2,000 ripper build and then add a monitor and it'll be roughly about the same money as buying a 5K iMac all spec'd up. And we'll compare 16 cores versus four cores, 32 threads versus eight threads. I'm definitely interested in hearing your thoughts about these two machines. I know this is not exactly a scientific clip, but I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts and opinions. Uh, for me, it's definitely the iMac just because it's a beautiful all-in-one package and you do get a beautiful, really hard to argue with 5K display that has 500 nits of brightness and a 100% color accuracy on the RGB scale. So it's very important for me to do color accurate work so I could put it on YouTube and know that it's gonna look good on multiple platforms. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave me a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at Marco M. Hanna. If you haven't followed me already, go ahead and do so. If you're going out to CES 2018, I'll be there. I'm looking forward to meeting some of you guys and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.